Hello guys, today I will have a set of random tips about Laravel authentication engine, maybe some shorter ways to write things, maybe some functions you didn't know that existed in Laravel, and this time I will do it a bit differently. So typically I write some code and show you the action. Now I will show you the exact places in the documentation with examples where you can read that. That would be a proof that probably everything that is in my videos exists in Laravel documentation. You just have to read it, read it twice, read it three times. I know it's a long thing. One of my students counted that whole Laravel documentation is 700 pages long, so it would take a lot of time, but reading the documentation is totally valuable. So let's go. Tip number one. How can you log in with a user if you have user ID or you have user object? It's in the documentation. So on the page of authentication, you have other authentication methods and you can do something like this. So auth login user and auth login using ID. And you can even pass remember true or false. And also you can do that with facade or with something like this. So helper auth login and then you have a user here. It's useful for automated tests, for example, where you create a user login with that user and then test something. But also it may be helpful when you register the user and you automatically want to create the session for them. Tip number two, how do you get logged in user ID? There is a longer way and there is a shorter way. So user ID equals, I've seen people doing something like auth user and then ID and that works. But you can take a look at the documentation again and retrieving the user is shorter, auth ID. So you don't need user, you may pass just ID but like a function, it's a method, not a property. And also, of course, you can use facade for that. So I will not repeat for other tips, but probably for all of them, you may use auth as a facade or auth helper. It's the same thing. I prefer helper to not initiate facade every time. And this I can use in blade or in any console command or any class, wherever, but it's a personal preference. Tip number three is how to check the logged in user in blade. And I see people doing something like this, but there's a shorter way. Again, looking at the documentation, in the Blade documentation, there's a section for authentication directives and there's a directive called auth. So you don't need to check like this, you just need to do auth and, and auth like this. And also you can do the opposite way, so guest and and guest. Tip number four is how to implement email verification for a new user, for a registered user. And in the default user model of Laravel, we have that must verify email used, but it's actually never used. So to enable that verification, let's go to the documentation. There's a section of email verification and all we need to do is to actually use that implements must verify email here. Implements must verify email. And then what it does, if we go to a file called event service provider, there's an event caught called registered and on registered, we will send the email verification notification. So you can see the syntax. If the user is instance of must verify email, which we just did, and email is not verified, then we send that email. And a bit more about that is in the documentation, how to prepare the database and how to perform everything related to the notification of verification. Tip number five, we're not running away too far from that registered event. What other events we may listen to? So for example, if someone logs in, we may save their IP address or log in time or something like that. If we go to Laravel documentation again, in the authentication section, there's events. And here's the list of all the events that we may listen to. So create our own listeners. And for example, we can catch login event or attempting to log in or verified, which is related to the email verification. Also log out, password reset and others. Tip number six is how to protect some of your routes if you want additional confirmation of the password for more sensitive areas. And I like how it's implemented in GitHub. So if for my repository, I go to manage access, I immediately am asked for password again. So how to implement that in Laravel? Look what we have here. It's in authentication again, protecting routes for configuration of password confirmation, the section is called. And basically what you need to know is a specific middleware called password.confirm. If your routes are protected by this middleware, 
then you will get redirected to a specific page to confirm the password. And there are a few more settings here that you need to know about. And this function appeared in Laravel 6.2 and Laravel News had an article about it in 2019. Next tip is about how to create a user artificially without registration form. So by default in Laravel, there's a file called database factories user factory, which some fake rules for how to create the user with password is password. And all you need to do to create that is in the seeders, you go to database seeder and do something like this. So exactly what is written here, this line would create 10 users. Or if you need one user, just do this. But if you need a specific user, then you can go to Laravel Tinker. So go PHP Artisan Tinker. And then in here do user create. Or you can use a factory here. So factory create. And then in that array, you may override any fields you want. So for example, if you want email to be admin admin com, for example, let's write out. And we have created a new user with user ID one and with email like we want. It's not a fake email. It's the one that we provided here. Next tip is about Laravel Fortify. But for those who don't use Laravel Fortify, did you know that there is a specific validation rule for password? So if you want to strengthen your password or validate that the password is secure enough, you can copy the rule class from the Fortify. And here's how it looks. Length is eight, then required uppercase, then required numeric, and then required special character. So even if you don't use Fortify, you can basically copy and paste this class with different validation messages. And that class has methods where you can set the actual length that you want, whether it's require uppercase or require numeric or others. An example how it is used in the Fortify repository itself is validation rules for required string new password. And then on top of new password, you may have a chain of methods. So new password require this require that length 10, for example, or have other chain of different properties. And this was an example that was not in the official Laravel documentation. So it's a rare case of that, but interesting to know. And that's it. These are my short tips about authentication. But a more broad tip or advice, again, is to read all of that and try to implement some of that in your projects practically. If you want more tips like this one, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because I'm shooting the videos daily now for at least a few months. And I want to continue doing that. I'm enjoying daily videos, but I need your support, including financial support. So if you like one of the three or more of the three products that you see on the screen, check them out. And each time someone purchases anything from there, our Laravel admin panel generator, my courses or my live wire kit, our team earns more money. And then I can spend my time freely on daily videos for free on YouTube like this one. See you guys in other videos.